Okay, uh, Lauren, we just can I, wait mention, can, I mention, can I mention what Anne at the end? Yeah, oh. you can do, of course, you can. We're we just waiting for people to join. As you can see, the top um, of the screen there next to the live, yep. there's a, okay. an eye. There's one person just joined. Mashallah, that's about. By the way, have you shared it with your page as well. You know what? I haven't. How do I do that? That's really rubbish of me. So, what do well, I let, do? do? Let I me post? just. Okay, so basically, um, uh, for those, have you got Lauren's page on Restream, LinkedIn? Oh, don't tell me he's gone. No. Ah, can you send the details of your. Can you tell her how to do it, please? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can do it whilst you're live. Otherwise, just take the link. Take the yeah, link from my page. Yeah. You take the link to. From, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, so I'll go to your page now. Salam alaikum, everybody. We're just being um, old people doing tech. Hello, dears. Hello. We're just trying to do yes. technology. Technology. Technological right, like transfer. We have the technology. We just don't have the intelligence. Right. Yeah. Um, love from India. Oh, mashallah. Life from India. Oh. I How are you, Ajmal? We're good. Well, alhamdulillah, it's the best month ever. So there's no way that we can possibly be in a bad way. Not in Ramadan. Not even if you're undergoing severe tests. Ramadan is just the business. So Mashallah. It's the business, man. It's the business. And right, then and we've got uh, Akhtar is smiling and laughing at the same time. I never understood that emoji, really. But anyway, it probably means something good. And Anyway, guys, what we're doing, uh, right, we're going to be interviewing each other, probably. Lauren Booth. Yeah. You can guess which one's Lauren Booth. Is it that one or that one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so Lauren Booth, of course, as everybody knows, is a, an author. Uh, she's a playwright. She's a, an actress. One well, actor, actor, is it? Actor. PC, PC world. And um, uh, she's also uh, a revert or a new old. I would say old new Muslim because you're not new anymore. But you've embraced Islam several years ago, and that we've done the story on the show. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And today's reflection really is well, it's reversion, reflection, <laughs> reversion, revival. I think because mm -hmm. it's about reviving the faith within this beautiful month of Ramadan and talking about being a revert. I don't even like these terms, convert, revert. They all sound very aggressive and rather. Wrong, contrived, uh, Lauren, mm. don't they? I think. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli alayhi Muhammad. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everybody out there. I see Bangladesh in the house, India in the house, Thailand. Mashallah, you get really the the Eastern Hemisphere. Is is there a hemisphere? Or is it North and South? You know, the Eastern part of the world is really mm. um, into this. Mashallah, because it's based in it's New a, Zealand, I guess. It's an ummasphere. Ummasphere. Have you just made that up? Because that's actually <laughs> I, I did. like it. That's brilliant. I reckon we go for it. Ummasphere. Oh, we can goodness. launch it. It's a new podcast. Atmosphere. Uh, no, no, shush! I'm having it. I'm having it. You've given it to me. Alhamdulillah. No, I've already. Wrote, I just. I'm just about to register it. I've just thought about no, that one. Oh, he's on the. What do you think, guys? The atmosphere. Salams from Afghanistan. Go for it, Lauren. Sorry, interjected. I just had to. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so we we kicked off by saying that the whole term mm. about reverts and converts um i always want to go we always want to go back to the earliest muslims and um see how would they ever um, um refer to themselves i wonder maybe new muslims or um yeah I, I don't actually know the answer to that how the how the friends of the prophet peace just muslims just now reborn as a muslim maybe subhanallah atmosphere is great isn't it nobody can have that i'm battling i'm battling um Yusuf for that. Maybe we'll do a share. <sighs> Almost here, alhamdulillah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? Yusuf, Yusuf. What <laughs> yeah, by the way, I, yeah. I just plugged in another. You know you know what it's like when you're on these things? You've got, like, wires everywhere. 
you know, living in the land of uh, great technology, we've got world of technology, we've got like one, two, three, four, and, and I tried to plug this lot in, yeah, earlier on. Oh There's wow. another two wires. Wow. There's no, there are not enough ports for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. That's the problem. Anyway, yeah, sorry, Lauren, I just had to dive off and put the, the battery on. So what was your uh, final statement there? Well, my final the statement was, what would the earliest Muslims have called themselves? Um, Ummah, we now say he's a convert to Islam, but would he just have been, I am now Muslim? Would that have been enough? Yeah, they would have just been defined as they are in the Quran. Either you are a mu'min or a Muslim, which has many, many different descriptions, or it is a disbeliever, a kafir, or or it would be a, Allah's messenger mentioned, of course, that he knew who the Munafiq were. So hopefully we're not in those... <laughs> Please don't make me of those two categories. Make, make me of those who are the believers. So we're, we're Muslims. And it's only now, and I, I don't even know whether it's correct to say revert, new, but, you know, born again, because then it sounds too much like a Christian, yeah, <laughs> born again Christian. Um, but, but in essence, we are kind of um, on the fitra. Asalaamu Alaikum from Pakistan, Lauren. Fitra. I didn't know you were in Pakistan. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, you're in. Where are you, by the way? Oh, by the way, Salam, I'm, I am in um, Istanbul right now, in a lovely uh, little area by the coast, by the grace of Allah. And um, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, you know, when we wake up in a Muslim land, especially in Ramadan, and you throw open your window and you hear the adhan, um, it just, I, I just really, I'm sobbing. I'm sobbing because mm -hmm. I'm like, Allah, how did you bring me here? How did mm -hmm. a girl from North London? who wasn't even, you know, brought up around Muslims, is now in Ramadan in my 53rd year, by the grace of Allah, 10 years a Muslim, <clears throat> listening to the Adhan at Fajr. And you know what's really nice as well, Yusuf, is that mm -hmm. you see all the lights on. So although mm -hmm. Turkey is, is really split 50% 50, 50 sec, 50 mm -hmm. secular and quite mm -hmm. avidly secular, and then 50% Muslims, but how many practice mm -hmm. it's between them and Allah, when it's Ramadan and you see the lights on at 4 a.m., mm. I don't know, it really fills you up. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I must be absolutely amazing to be there. Um, wish I was there too. I mean, but uh, <clears throat> we have some beautiful things out here in, in, in England. Uh, we have countryside, we have mountains. Where, you know, I'm forever running up or walking up mountains and, and just marveling at the, the greenery and the the foliage, you know, the trees, the bushes, whatever it is, and mm -hmm. and thinking that we've got a we've got it good as well. We really um, have got it, got beautiful. it good. I'll move that a bit closer. <laughs> Just remember, I'm relaxing. Yeah. So, um, uh, Lauren, today, um, what we were going to talk about is maybe some of the challenges that I face with, uh, you know, uh, making that decision to become Muslim. And then in the month of Ramadan, when did you embrace Islam in, in Ramadan, by the way? Well, the amazing thing is that I, I, I'm sure you'll agree with this, is that every Muslim that I've met so far has got a pre-Islam Ramadan story. So mm. if, you, if you ever have doubts, brothers and sisters, about the veracity of the shayateen being locked up and Jannah being physically opened, let us tell you, as people were who were outside even that knowledge base, that mm. Ramadan feels different when you're around Muslims and when you're in a Muslim country and when you're, mm. uh, you know, just as a human being, something mm. is going on. So I had the grip by the grace of Allah to be in mm. Palestine for one Ramadan and uh, also in Iran for a Ramadan. And in both mm. of the homes and the masjids that I went to in those different places, I thought, oh, wow, something's going on here. Something bigger than me. I'm not the end of the world. I'm not, I'm not the beginning and the end. I'm just, mm. oh, I'm nothing. So I had that really feeling of being small, like being on the, um, the banks of a great sea. And that was kind of the start of the relief, I guess. Mm. Alhamdulillah. So Ramadan is a, a catalyst, isn't it, for a lot mm. of people. And it's not surprising, really, is it? Because, of course, if you consider, if you go right back 1400 years ago 
to when uh, you know when the Quran was sent. Of course, before that, the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, he accepts the the message from the angels, from the angel in the cave, and 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 he's, he becomes. You know, he he relates to Allah for the first time authentically, you know, from the angels. So that that so what that happens in this month of Ramadan, right? Uh so so he's a revert <laughs> and I hate to say that, but but you know, he's an a revert 1400 years ago, or or somebody that's uh suddenly got the commandment to call. Mm his people, his qawm, away from kufr and shirk and worshipping idols and to this beautiful, incredible vastness of the deen of Islam. So we're uh, right now, 1400 years, wind the clock forward, we're having that discussion together in the Ummah sphere. And somebody says, Salaam Alaikum from the Ummah sphere. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's just amazing. And it's in this month of Ramadan. And that's why it's so significant, isn't it, uh, Lauren? Yeah, subhanAllah. And I don't want anybody who's not a revert or convert or has, uh, has grown up in another background to feel left out in this conversation. I, I think um, the big moments that we're, we're discussing here is uh, the human heart awakening to a new way of being and this may be for you brother or sister out there your first return to prayer in years you, you may mm -hmm. say this is when I really want to start or or maybe you you're, you're struggling with your fast and you need to um uh, and just a, a, a dua will help you you know so we make mm -hmm. dua for all of us to stay on this path because <clears throat> we all uh, we all are given the chance Allah is fair Allah is not unkind Allah is the all merciful and every human being gets the chance to worship one God now that can be in in the Serengeti um, and I remember being um, on Hajj Yusuf and brothers and sisters yes. and mm -hmm. seeing the tribes of the world and mm. how that touches your heart you know there's the mm. tall angular people who are obviously desert people from the African plains and then there are um, uh, brothers and sisters from Chinese areas, and they have these incredible headdresses. May Allah Taala protect the Uyghur. Amin, ya Rabbu Alamin. Amin. Amin. We're under such such appalling appalling stress, but mm. we are the you know that that atmosphere. So we all start from day one. We all have yes. a day one, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, I suppose as, as sentient adults, um, we Subhanallah, we. We make a conscious decision, and that's why um, Akhtar is mentioning the fact that we're all kind of reverse, because like we, we go from childhood and then adolescence, and then we kind of become aware of the fact that we need to be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? So in a way, we are all making conscious decisions to return to our fitra at some stage. Yeah, and it and it is. It's when are you grown up? And of course, we we do go through an elongated um, childhood here. Although interestingly, in Islamic uh, <coughs> understanding, traditionally, you 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 you're fully grown up at the age of forty, I believe. <laughs> that that so you're almost on the tipping point of of the of the the beard, white beard hairs and the white hair when you're considered mm. grown up. But that's not to say you're a child mm. until forty. And I think yeah. in the West, where we grew up, um, we have an elongated thing of you're still playing um, PS2 or whatever, or, or Sony <laughs> games when you're 35. Mm. What is that? Mm. Brothers, please stop it. Do something better with our time, inshallah to Allah, okay? Yeah, Interesting, but... you, never find, you don't find sisters spending 12 hours a day on an Xbox. Isn't that interesting? Mm, I'd so like to that. challenge that. I'd like to challenge that. Our sisters, do you play games? Let's find out. Yes, exactly. We should just call everyone that's Muslim, Muslim, not revert or convert. I agree. I don't really like it, but we got into this. Thing. We've got somebody from Philippines watching, uh, Rafad, Rafado. Alonto, I think it is. Oh, mashallah, nice name. Um, and yeah, so so guys, um, put your questions to Lauren as well if you want to uh, 
know more about Lauren and her work. Of course, she's working with an organization um, every year on, in Ramadan called Watan. Do you want to say a little bit about Watan as well? Mm, by the grace of Allah, um, <clears throat> I, this is my second year running, working with watan.org.uk. And we are committed to helping Syrian refugees who, ha who haven't even been able to flee. Can you imagine? There, mm. there, are, there are the refugees in the camps where you visited <laughs> who are in one situation. And then there's the internally displaced brothers and sisters mm. who are, I mean, you could be 25 miles from your actual home, mm. but it's gone. I mean, that, that in itself is mm. such a trauma. Imagine you can mm. look over a hill and go, I used to live there. That's the home of my mm. grandparents. Mm. And it's either rubble or it's, it's, it's armed mm. and you can't go back. And that is, and so you're just wandering about in the wilderness. I mean, really, it's, it's prophetic. Really, it's biblical what they've gone through. And um, so by the grace of Allah, Watan have pa partnered with the United Nations and they've been... Um, allowed to build a new village camp. So whereas you've been, Yusuf, to the, the tent camps, which are really yeah. like mm. nobody should be in them, not even yeah, for a night. One night, one night out of desperation and they should be somewhere else, but not yeah. months and years. Mm. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, some of, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's inconscionable. It's just, it's... Um, it, it's, it's yeah, it, it needs to be, uh, you know, it's something that we've been talking about. 100 million uh, displaced people um, in the world now. Um, majority of them, of course, are believers, uh, Muslims. Um, yeah. So it's something we need to really, really, subhanAllah, challenge in the UN with, with the the various apparatus that we have around the world and uh, all the charities need to get together and say enough's enough yeah. because yeah. we we've, we've been feeding those people haven't we lauren and uh, right. we've been going out to the camps like all of us we've got of course we want to talk about one sister that's there in um, uh, turkey with you and the work that she's doing a little bit later on but she's uh, she's engaged on a radio show i am because i've just been told she's yeah. been talking about us on the radio station but it's very good what she's saying so don't worry um, <laughs> okay. but let me finish let me finish with 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 what and um, what they've done Go is they've actually got semi permanent structures now so it's yeah. people who may have been in tents for 2 years 5 years 10 years in tents yeah. with children and they've now got semi-permanent structures and it's actually um it's built for purpose so there's 3600 dwellings that house up to 20,000 people brothers and sisters and they've got proper sanitation now mm. if you've had a latrine floating through the middle of your mm. tent for half a yeah. decade uh, yes. having toilets that flush and mm. real water wells is like a step towards Jannah, Allahu Akbar. So um, and we, 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 they're building a school and I am engaged with them to build a health clinic. Now, I don't okay. know if any of you, may Allah protect you, have had any illness this year, but we have had some illness. And I might talk about this with you in a second as well mm. um, in mm. my family. And um, mm. running around trying to find a doctor, okay, mm. is, uh, is, is something that can panic you. I live in Turkey and I didn't know where the doctors were, but they're on every corner, but getting the right one for the right price for the, this, that. But if you have, can't find one mm. and somebody's dying and you're watching a kid get sick and even a cut in a refugee camp, a cut, you know, can, can be, mm. um, can lead to infection. So they're going to, yes. so we're building a farm, we're building an on-site pharmacy mm. and a clinic and it's going to cost fifty thousand pounds to run for one mm. year with doctors and uh, pharmaceuticals and everything they need. So please be a part of it. Um, you can go to my web page um, on Facebook, Lauren Booth Official, and you can also go to Just Giving and look up Lauren Booth Watan. And inshallah, we will get that built this year. Uh, inshallah, I I pray that that will be built this year. Inshallah, or very very soon. So, I was watching from Pakistan, from Afghanistan again. Uh, we've got those people. Great uh, job, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala always bless you uh, with both uh, um, health, happiness, and iman. I mean, of course, I mean, and of course, we've got uh, somebody watching from Kashmir as well. Mashallah, may Allah, Allah aid all of these different parts of the world, isn't it, Lauren? Um, Lauren, tell us about, because a lot of people want to know now, because I put the question out there. Um, how has um, Turkey benefited you in your deen? 
and the Ooh. pros and cons. Somebody's actually asking, what are the pros and cons? I think nice. you may, maybe you're going to become an ambassador for Turkey to, uh, through this. <laughs> I uh, Number one is I, I do love Turkey. Obviously, that's why uh, I, I say that I was that I chose to live here. But Allah also chose me to be here. I was I visited Turkey like four or five times uh, two or three years ago. I went on the Erturul tour, by the way, by the grace of Allah. Don't give me ein, just say mashallah, okay? <laughs> um, uh, I got to go on set there and kind of, you know, just fell in love with the Ottoman history. And mm. the thing about the Ottoman history, brothers and sisters, is, and I really want us as an umosphere, <clears throat> the copyright use of chambers, um, the <laughs> really embrace the fact that um, Muslim history is our history. So Ottoman history is very physically of the people of Turkey and the Turkmen, but it's also emotionally and spiritually my history. Because frankly, my history is not the kings and queens of England who chopped off each other's heads and stole from the mm. poor to give to the rich. That I'm mm. not interested in them. They're just money makers, right? <laughs> They're just business people. They're just the firm. They literally call themselves the firm. Don't get me started, right? He's a republic. He's Irish. He knows he's a republican. He'll not be into them at all. Yes. Um, you won't be talking about that at all. He'll yeah. not be talking about that. Oh, God not help talk. Ireland, by the way. Let's pray for Ireland. I mean... I mean. I mean, so um, so when when we hear about Ottoman history, it's like these are my people. Here you are, mm. and so I get really excited about that. Alhamdulillah. So I did make lots of dua to Allah. I said, please mm. um, let me let me live in Turkey, not somewhere like Turkey, not round the corner from Turkey. I asked for Turkey, and then by the grace of Allah, uh, a brother approached me for marriage, and um, we were talking, and I said, oh, where do you live? He said, I live in Istanbul. I said, and I'm in. Mm. <laughs> so, wow, um, mashallah. you're in. <laughs> and by the way, what do you like? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just need the destination, location, 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 right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so, tell us about because you've 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 been in Turkey for a while, but you've gone through some pretty hair raising um, history over the last year or so haven't you i mean all of us have had problems and we've been locked up and stuff but you've had some serious tests now how have you how do you feel about that do you feel a bit bitter or angry that you've had those tests or how do you feel subhanallah i'm immensely grateful to allah to allah i mean i, I haven't spoken about this before but two years ago i was homeless yusuf knows this two mm. years two years ago uh, these things happen um th th this life is not linear <clears throat> it's it's you know this this um modern idea this secular idea of progress being in one direction mm -hmm. whereas actually progress is upwards so it's not in mm -hmm. this sphere it's it's upwards with the divine that's the only progress that we're looking at so um after a divorce i had nowhere to live and i lived with some sisters and they gave me a room in their house with my with my daughter and um I said to my daughter when we moved into the first sister's house, I said, we're here to help her, okay? We're not mm. going to feel sorry for ourselves. I, I reckon that Allah Ta'ala, by his grace, has put us in this house to help sister. So let's focus mm. on that, shall we? And um, by the grace of Allah, we did. She needed some mm. company. She was going through a divorce. Then we moved to another house. And a sister who'd been living a life, um, she was a single mom. Mashallah, tabarakallah. She made her home welcome to us. She said, before you guys came, it was like we were living in a hotel. Everybody did their own thing. But when you came, we had dinners together. And she's, you know, she sent me lovely messages saying, oh, we really miss our Ramadan together. <laughs> so, you know, it's forward progress is the progress upwards, brothers and sisters. Mm not to the next job it's not to the next um like or follow or you know what i mean all of these things are just going to be gone so really mm. it's been a stepping stone and the last year like you like all of you there have been some tests mm. but i want this inshallah to allah this ramadan <laughs> starting with myself to really recognize the blessings and the upward mobility that comes with those mm. tests I'm mm. having that one, upward mm. mobility. You have atmosphere. I'm having upward mobility. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> people, let, are, so. people are asking, uh, what is the topic? of? We're, we're talking about actually challenges um, and Ramadan. 
uh, you know, as, as a way, as a means to overcome those challenges and to revitalize um, our faith and our spiritual self, our inner dimension. Uh, but particularly we were talking about reversion. Uh, we were talking about people that do make that decision to come back to the faith. Uh, it could be a born Muslim. It could be a, a person who isn't born into a Muslim family. Right, Laura? Yes, because, uh, of course, when you come to Islam, and I really wanted to raise this point, uh, Allah <laughs> fills us with such <clears throat> joy, but also a kind of very positive guilt. Now, if you, if, you, if you talk to any psychologist today, they'll say, don't feel shame, don't feel mm. guilt, let it all go. It was, you, you know, you, you're beautiful the way you are, you don't need to change. That's not Islam. Mm. Mm. That's not what Allah's message to mankind is. No. The, the, the guilt and the shame is iman. Mm. That I did something wrong, I messed up. Of course, you know, and, and Islam allows us to move through that. Okay, mm. we all agree that guilt and shame that just makes us cry into ourselves. I'm such a terrible person mm. is not going to take mm. us anywhere. But Allah mm. gives us a way to cleanse ourselves. And what happens is when we accept Islam, whether it is you as an adult Muslim um, who's who said, I, I, I take this shahada for myself, not because of my grandparents, mm. or whether it's Yusuf and I, because we uh, we come to Islam by the grace of Allah out, from outside. When we, when we make that transition, we want to give up everything. It's like, I'm now mm. going to commit myself every single breath, Allah, to saying sorry to you and proving myself to you. And mm. what happens is we come unstuck. I know Yusuf knows what I mean. He knows mm. I know what I mean. What happens is we forget the rationale of, okay, how do we secure our family um, keep things ticking over and please Allah. How is Islam incorporated into our life? We kind of mm. think that Islam is a separate place to our life. So we forget about earning money. We forget about it. And a lot of us give up our jobs. I mean, I was mm. working with a, 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 I was working with the Daily Mail. Can you believe it? <laughs> Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Mm. I would have been there. Right? <laughs> I was working for the mail group, I, and I'm like, I, I just didn't have that voice in my head anymore to go, nah, 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 nah. now there are Muslims mm. working for the Daily Mail now who will say, I'm feeding my family, don't make the halal haram. They've got a mm. point. But that's not mm. what happens when you come to Islam. Mm. Right? Islam is like, I am. you are running a thousand miles an hour from anything that might be around those kind of people because you can't cope with it anymore. Because you have to, you have to change so much, and and I think also, for me, somebody like me, it's probably necessary not to be in that environment, because because the the great imams and our and our scholars would advise if you think you might slip back into things in that environment, do get out of it. So although it might make us, so what the the thing that I'm raising brothers and sisters is um, that that often we'll find converts to Islam go into very deep financial issues. Um, and we wonder why when we come from wealthy countries. Well, that's why. That's part of the reason, plus the tests from outside. Absolutely. The test internally and externally. Of course, nobody knows what tests that people are going through, really. Um, and we might, ex we might look at a test, Lauren, um, as we see a person that seems to be very sick, seems to be poor, seems to be better. But then, and I meet them all the time in the camps, by the way. I, I see people that have gone through horrendous challenges, but they're actually smiling, engaged, playing with their children. And and when you ask them, but how is it for you? And they say, Alhamdulillah, because they've undergone the test and they've won. Mm. They they kind of not won, what's the word? They they gained in the test. They became stronger in their iman. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, I send tests to the believers, um, you know, and, and then if they're patient upon that, they get closer to me, they draw closer to me, you know. And this this is the this is the the, the context uh, uh, which when you so when you look at people then you probably you might have a very strong test. Your test, the internal tests, uh, the tests of mm. of uh, shuh, uh, of uh, shubuhat, of you know doubts, of 
um, not really feeling a bit lazy about your faith might be much more severe than the test that they're facing. And they've undergone their tests with sabr. So this is this is the thing, isn't it, Lauren? You've had a major test this year. I mean, uh, tell us yeah. about the exact context of your test. Um, so we, we had, 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 yeah, subhanAllah. So I had a couple of things go on. Um, by the grace of Allah, and I'm not complaining to anybody, uh, this is just mm. for the... Uh, for the duty of, of, of sharing really um, good news in a way. Although um, the first one was really tough. It was my mum got cancer and died very rapidly. And, um, you know, the sad thing of losing uh, someone close to you who's not Muslim is when you, when you see them, I saw my mum minutes after she was dead. And it wasn't good, guys. It's, mm. it's not a nice memory. It's not like, oh, my mum was washed and there she is in a, in a white sheet prepared to meet her Lord. This is, mm. this is real. This, this is a painful end mm. with, with nothing sent before. Mm. And Allah is all forgiving. I, 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 still have, I still know my Lord is merciful. But if we don't put anything before, we are putting ourselves at, at great risk. And, mm. and, you know, so, so we went through that and um, alhamdulillah. I, you know, at the end of the day, if you live to be 53 and you've got one or two parents, mm. you, you're, you're, you're in the minority of humanity that's ever lived. So I had yeah. my parents until I was very old myself. So that's good. Mm. Alhamdulillah. And then um, I was, this was really interesting. I was in the UK to say goodbye to my mom and um, to, to clean up her affairs. I was, I was going to move in with her and look after her, but we, it didn't happen. And, um, I was meant to come back to, to Turkey on the 25th of December. Uh, mm. Oh, no, I was meant to, sorry, my husband was going to fly to the UK on the 25th of December and spend time with us in the UK. <laughs> but on the 19th of December, and this is how you know Allah is working in your life. Keep your eyes open for how Allah is, is, is moves us from one place to another. And we're like, why did that happen? On the 19th of <laughs> December, I called my husband and I said, I'm coming home. I'm coming home for six days and then we'll fly to the UK together. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't you say to your, your, your loved one, I'm coming over in six days. Why don't we save the 300 pounds mm. and I'll see you in six days? I said, no, book me a flight now, please. I'm coming home. Two days later, he had a massive stroke. Two days wow. later. And I, I don't know if any of you have been around somebody who's had a stroke, but it's the equivalent of uh, this. I'll, I'll, sh I'll act out for you how it was. Um, so how are you doing, Yusuf? I was going to trees now, and uh, why do mm. you up down, but mm. yeah, and then, mm. and it's like, oh yeah. my god, it's literally like a robot who has had mm. you know bits of machinery ripped out from inside of them. Yeah, so for a so day. Like he was yeah, a day he was speaking, for a day he was speaking nonsense, and we said, this isn't right. Being a man, he didn't want to go to the doctor. May Allah bless him. I'm not going to the doctor. Mm. Yeah, but you're kind of inventing words, and you're a journalist. Mm. So, mm. And then the next day, I'd say that the shutters went down, and it was mm. like the way that parents describe autism. It's like they had the MMR, and the kid one day is like this, and the next day, how are you? I don't mm. know. And you're like, okay. Mm. So we went through that and um, I, you know, you immediately start saying la ilaha illallah, la ilaha mm. illallah. So I put my husband into a car and because we, we, have, we didn't have insurance <clears throat> and the medical insurance and there's a special area in hell for the people in medical insurance. If you, you know, that's a job to leave because that's mm. what I said, mm. well, evil, evil, evil in this world, medical insurance. Mm. They didn't cover him because he's got diabetes and anything with mm. diabetes that impacts the yeah. neurology we don't cover you. So we're running here, mm. we're running there, we're trying to find a doctor, the doctor's asking a thousand pounds and he's sinking and I'm watching him literally mm. dying. Um, we eventually get some advice and I go, we get an MR, MRI. And I, my, my husband, by the grace of Allah, is a learned man, he's an Ustad. Mm. And I said, darling, why aren't you making dhikr? Say la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And I'm like, why aren't you asking Allah? And then in the taxi, Yusuf, I said to him, who's your God? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know. Allah Akbar. I said, La ilaha illallah. I said, who's your prophet? 
Mm. And he said, I don't know. And I mm. said, what is your faith? He said, I don't know. Mm. And I have never known fear like that. I was just mm. making so much thicker, just holding his hand. Mm. And he looked mm. so confused. And, and I knew he was in great pain because his brain was blocked because blood was going to the wrong area and mm. not the right mm. area. Air wasn't getting mm. to the brain. So when he went into, and this is when the miracle comes, subhanAllah. Mm. He went into the MRI and I had Allah's hundred names. I just grabbed two books when I was leaving. I'm like, mm. we need faith. We need God right now. <clears throat> yeah. Whatever's happening, I need God. I grabbed a Sirah of the Prophet mm. and I grabbed a 99 names <clears throat> of Allah. 99 names of Allah. And when he was going in the MRI, I begged the people, let me go in with him. Let me go in with him. Let me stand with him. Mm. And I shouted the 99 names of Allah. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Qudus. And I was stroking his foot and I was yelling it so he could hear it. Yelling it mm. so that he could hear the 99 mm. names of the clanging of the MRI. Because an mm. MRI sounds like um, a workshop. They have to keep the parts of your brain pinging so they can take photos of it. It's like bang, mm. bang, bang. And I'm saying, Ya, ya Qudus, Ya Salam. And he comes out 30 mm. minutes later and he says, Salam Alaikum, Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Maikam salam rahmatullah subhanallah. All praise to Allah. So, that's uh it's a frightening story, like somebody has mentioned. It's very a frightening story because it can happen to anybody anytime. And of course, we're not in control of our bodies, we're not in control of our our souls. Our souls are in, under the ownership of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they can, you know, every night the soul ascends to heaven above the seventh heaven and it asks for permission to return to the body. It's a minor death. Sleep is a minor death. And just this can happen any time. And even when we're not sleeping, that happens, right? That's happened to your husband. That has happened. We're talking about, of course, Lauren's husband, guys, because I know some of you are asking, who are we talking about? Who is this, uh, you know, this person? It's a person that's very dear to Lauren. Lauren uh, lives with her, her husband in Turkey, in Istanbul, or very close to the, the, at the sea, mashallah. And she's explaining about the tests that she's had. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about reversion, reality. <laughs> we're talking about, of course, returning in this beautiful for blessed month of Ramadan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in our pristine state, which is our with our fitra intact. So tell us about what happened after, after this incredible situation. You've, you know, somebody's saying it's a miracle, Lauren. Uh, you know, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer your prayer, near-death experience where, we're, we're, you know, we think we're automatically going to say shahada, but that is not the case. Many, many people have been in this, this, this similar situations. So what, what happened next? So uh, we, we waited for the MRI. Then we went to um, a hospital and they said, yes, he's still having a stroke right now and it will cost a thousand pounds for us to do anything i said we don't have it they said then you the, then we're sending you home mm. and i said okay khalil and he said alhamdulillah because he could remember allah then he could only speak a few words but he knew alhamdulillah and he, mm. he told, told me recently he didn't know what it meant only three weeks ago <clears throat> did, he, did he understand what allahu akbar actually means in english Right, mm. That's, and this mm. has been four months now. Subhanallah. So we get mm. home, and he rests. And the next morning, he, um, I wake up, and he's already awake, full on mm. stroke. Guys, can't mm. speak English. He's fluent in Arabic. He can't speak mm. Arabic. You know what I see him doing? Mm. He's sitting in front of the Quran, trying to read Al Fatiha. Mm. He's just saying. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is someone who is a fluent Arabic speaker and teaches, mm. teaches the deen. And that to me was the best thing of all. And I kept after that trying to take him to different doctors. And he said, just leave me mm. with the Quran. He mm. said, as he got better, and, and I'm putting it very succinctly, this could mm. take him mm. three days to say this. He mm. just say Quran, medicine, Quran, mm. Mm. Shifa, Quran, mm. Shifa, and he sat on the floor for mm. four hours a day, and he read Quran as best as he could. Mm. Allah, and he's come back, and he's come back, 
with mm. so little medicine, guys. Not one night, not one night in hospital. Right? And A stroke where he couldn't read, he couldn't write, couldn't remember Arabic, could barely mm. speak English, and mm. not one night. Um, he had some injections we did at home for three nights, and now he's mm. back at work. Allahu Akbar. And and is he fully functioning now? He's he's eighty percent there. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Would you say Allah that Allah. his faith has increased as a result of what has happened? Yes. So this was a test that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent him in order to make him a stronger believer and to give him, let him draw closer to Him. Subhanallah. And that is um, why people get tested. And we don't want, we don't wish that type of test upon anybody. But subhanallah, look at the result of the test. The believer, you know, it indeed is ajibun. It's a very strange thing indeed that if he gets tested, he says, alhamdulillah, he has patience upon it and he's rewarded. And if he, he you know, vice versa, you know, he will be tested or she will be tested. And, you know, they they get something good and they say, Alhamdulillah, and they're rewarded for that as well. Not just something which is difficult, but something which is, subhanAllah, a benefit as well. Because beneficial things like giving lots and lots of money is also a test. If you get, like somebody gives you a million pounds today, it's a test for you to see whether you will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see whether you will remain upon steadfast upon your faith and pray to Allah, worship Allah properly. If you become arrogant, maybe lots of people when they get money, they suddenly become very arrogant. It's a test. Money's a test. As well as illness and sickness and difficulties, that's a test. You so, know, I, I, I would... There was so much, so much more. I want to share a couple more bits, brothers and sisters, because my husband kept saying to me, stop, doctors, doctors, stop, stop, doctors. Mm. And I'm like, I'm going, oh, my God, you can't see properly. You can't speak. Mm. I'm, I, you know, I have some internal panic. Mm. I have some mm. internal panic. May, may Allah forgive me. I had absolute mm. faith, but I was panicking for the person because mm. we're told that the mainstream mm. – uh, you know, that the doctors is the answer. He said, it's not. So what I started to do, um, a sister gave me this advice. She said, prophetic medicine. She said, um, get, get organic. Um, and I'm not saying don't go to doctors. We have mm. been to doctors. We are, he's getting treatment for his heart. Mm. He is, but it's as well. Okay. The complementary mm. medicine are the mainstream doctors. Mm. The real yeah. medicine of Islam. So I'm yeah. not saying yeah. Allah has, created the world of medicine for us brothers and sisters mm. if we are lucky and blessed enough to have access to it we're idiots not to take it okay mm. Mm. but i have seen that the shifa of the holistic prophetic medicine is much stronger and has no bad side effects so mm. i would rub the head at night with um uh, black seed oil and say al fatty has seven times and the next day he'd wake up and he'd be able to read I've mm. seen this with my eyes, brothers and sisters. This mm. has happened to mm. me, your sister, mm. who, is, who is known as someone in Charlotte to tell the truth. I've seen it. And, I, and we would pray together and he, he'd spend more time with the Quran. So then what happened was in January, he said that he, he was getting worried about needing to go back to, to work, Yusuf. So he said, yeah. I need to be on the computer. So this is actually February, <laughs> right? So he went on the computer and it was killing him. He, re he went mm. back into that state. So he mm. said, I'm closing the computer. If I ever want to work again, I'm going to spend all my time with Allah to Allah. He said, because mm. only the Quran is going to bring me back to my mm. work. Mm. And that's mm. Allah, 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 Allah. So it's been, it's been amazing. And I feel blessed. Mm. And we're not over mm. yet. We don't celebrate too much because we know that, that, that more mm. hurdles will come. But we are grateful for yeah. the blessing. And I pray for you all, brothers mm. and sisters, and I pray, mm. pray that we have confidence in the shifa um, mm. of the prophetic medicine and the reality that the words of Allah are healing. Mm. So, Lauren, let's take that, extend that out to the, the Ummah sphere, um, mm -hmm. and let's put a positive um, sort of spin on this because um, 
it seems as though, like I've said, a hundred million people displaced, you know, mm. um, wars in virtually every Muslim quote unquote majority land, Muslim land, quote, quote unquote, um, you know, because all the land is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believers are everywhere. But mm. or put that in context of your test and then look at the ummah. As, as it is now, it's going through unbelievable challenges and tests in the Philistine with the Ouijas, with the Yemenis, with the Syrians, with the even Pakistan, India. India is very bad at the Actually, moment as Yemen. well as Yemen, Yemen of course. And Hello. so how do we contextualize that? Why is that happening? happening? People will ask themselves. Now, have we just you, answered that? <laughs> I, I can't, I, obviously, I don't have the answer, but I have an observation that I'd like to share. Mm. I've, uh, you know, I just want to let everybody know Gaza was bombed two nights ago by Israel. No news. Mm. Every, every, every year, the first week of Ramadan, they bomb them just to take away, mm. to try and take away their security. But, mm. but you know, you know our, our Shaheed are, are in heaven <clears throat> and the evil ones go to Jahannam. So, so mm. just, just remember the people of Palestine, please. So I spent a long time, uh, a fair amount of time in Gaza, alhamdulillah. Oh. And what I noticed was that the less that they're given, the, the more that certain areas thrive. So what do I mean by that? Well, what is an area in the Middle East that has one of the highest literacy rates? It's the Gaza mm. Strip. Mm. It's Gaza. Mm. And what's the area in Palestine with like 97.5% literacy? It's Gaza. Mm. Now, there yeah. are parts of London that don't have that. Mm. Mm. There are parts of London that don't have that. Then the teacher said to me, the more they bomb us, the more Allah fills us with ilm and knowledge. Mm. And the other thing I noticed is that um, we are being disabled by luxury. We are mm. all our brother Yusuf, for our young, mm. you young people in your family, me too, mm. is of um, it's not even of steadfastness, it's of resilience. It's about the mm. ability to cope with day to day, which yeah. when you and I grew up, right, in the olden days, yeah, or when, when let's talk about our grandparents in the proper olden yeah. days, their resilience was you had a piece of bread with some mm. disgusting dripping on it. And you yeah. ate that and went to work, mm. and you were okay for the day. There was no question mm. of resilience. You just got on with it, okay? So now, because of the luxuries and the spoiling that we do with our young, <coughs> they have no resilience yeah. for day-to-day -day life. But when you're in Gaza, just as an example, it's like visiting the A-team. All right? Do you remember the A-team? Yes. Dun, 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 Mr. Right T the and so on and so forth. Mr. Yeah. T and yeah, mm. you, what happened was these these um, characters, kind of superheroes, if you like, they they they'd have to rescue somebody from a situation, and they'd only have a few wheels and a cog and a few old bits, and, and they'd always go into this garage, and they'd come out with some amazing tank, dun, 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 and it's like no, that's <coughs> from a jerry can and uh, <laughs> a jerry can and, and and two two teapots. It's not possible yeah. that they did it. <laughs> That's how people in our ummah are living. They are resourceful yeah. by the mm. grace of Allah. The men know how to make things work. Mm. The young are getting stronger. And the believers are strengthening. Now, mm. the other side of that we know. But let's focus today on that. Because yeah. if Allah wants us to be the next strong, uh, strong believers and strengthen resilient human mm. beings, this is how you do it. That that's it. This is how you do it. There's a. <laughs> this is how you do it. Yeah. No. I mean, the thing is that that this is so. It's a necessary part of us growing together. Subhanallah, as an ummah that will eventually overcome difficulties and be put in the box seat. So at the end of the day, if you want to be in the box seat, you're going to have to climb. You know. You know. Look. Mm. In other words, guys, what we're saying actually. But, the, but there's a cor corollary, then that is that you have to get up and do the work. You have to get up. So you, we, we need to get back into the ummah sphere. And wherever you are in the world, join the dots. 
join the dots. That's what it's all about. We've got people from all around the world on this live stream. Probably by the end of um, tomorrow, there would have been about 30,000 people from around the world that would have watched this. Inshallah, there'll be more. If you share the video, share it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, inshallah. Okay. Um, now, so you're in your different spheres everywhere, but you're at the Ummah sphere is linking you all, making you say, look, we're going to work together as an Ummah. We're going to work together as one family to try and achieve this. So Yusuf goes to the Syrian refugee camps and the Yemeni camps. Lauren does her bit and when, what, what, you know, and she starts talking about political issues. She starts making a play about her life. And then she's out there in Edinburgh in the fringe and she's, she's mainstream. And then somebody else is doing something else in Philippines and another other person doing something in Malaysia and then we look, link up the dots and we become part of that ummah sphere and suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said right time is right hmm. Allah will write it it's gonna happen and we know that Islam will enter upon every house hmm. even if it is made of hair or dirt if it's a tent or if it's a brick construction Islam will Insha'Allah, be ithna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the permission of Allah, definitely, certainly, according to the hadiths, enter upon every house, right? It's already happening, Lauren, isn't it? Isn't that already happening? Masha'Allah, masha'Allah. Look at that. And the other, you know, some people say that the name Muhammad is already known around the world. And that can be mm. Muhammad Ali is part of that. You know, why is he called Muhammad Ali? Why did Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, the great philanthropist, Rahim Allah, why did he say, um, I don't want my star put on the Hollywood Walk of Fame where people can walk across the name of Muhammad or the name Ali? I'm not going to do that. You put it on the wall or I won't be there. And they had to put the name Muhammad. They had to raise the name Muhammad in the Hollywood mm. Walk of Fame. Allahu Akbar. Mm, See, mashallah. right? Ah, number one name, that. isn't it? Number one name in the UK, is number it? Number one name. Number one name. Ahmed, <laughs> Mahmoud, uh, Mehmet, you know, alhamdulillah, yeah. we all have these lovely derivatives. And so and it is everything. Most everything. praised, most praised individual in the world, certainly, definitely. Are you talking about Muhammad Salah? Muhammad, no, Muhammad, the name Muhammad. The most, no, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not Muhammad Salah. Mo Salah, of course, is quite praised. <laughs> I see what you're saying, actually. Penny just dropped. Hello. 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 I'm, I'm a Liverpool supporter, you see, guys. So, yeah. you know, you have, uh, I, I saw a, a lovely mis- video. I saw a lovely video as well of um, footballers. Mm. It was from Ilmfeed of footballers who make their... Um, uh, do their fasting on the pitch, mashallah. Yeah. And I know we've got some Algerian brothers and sisters on. And the mm. Algerians are really cheeky because they just get their, if they're playing an international game, right, they just get their goalie to feign, feign illness, mm. to fall on the floor, right? At 9.16 p.m., fall on the floor, roll around a bit yeah. so we can break our fast. Yeah. And so that's what they do. And then the manager was asked, well, don't you think that's wrong? He said, uh, football or God? Yeah, I think, mm. I think it's okay. Yeah. Mashallah. Oh, the other night, uh, my son was just telling me actually yesterday um, that there, there's a, a there's a the football player, Muslim football player, playing for they were play, Man City were playing. Who were they playing? For goodness sake, I can't remember. Anyway, the one Muslim, uh, oh Chelsea, that's it. They were playing mm. Chelsea. Were playing Man City, and Chelsea won one nil against Man City. Yeah, which is unlike unheard of this season because it's just like last twenty games odd they haven't they haven't you know been able to they haven't even lost a game but then this player was fasting and he scored the goal Uh, zia zia or i've forgotten his name is somebody will correct me on this there's football heads over here i'm sure but there we are there we are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messages to all of us to even the players who the players must be thinking what the earth is this guy doing fasting I just dropped my son off at school. He's fasting, and they say, but doesn't, yeah, uh, Hakim uh, Ziyech, yes, he's a Moroccan football player, and he was fasting, and then he scored the goal. Yeah, so look, look at this. uh, So I dropped my son off at school, and, you know, and he's the only guy who's fasting in that school. He's the mm-hmm. only guy. I'm I, probably in, in, certainly in his, uh, in, in the big school. So look, we, 
everywhere there are messages being sent to people around us. We just need to hold fast. It's going to happen. This is the positive spin that we were talking about, Lauren. Yes, the tests are fast and furious, too fast and furious for us sometimes. And it's really, really, it's shocking. But look, we're in the month of Ramadan, guys. Now, tell me, Lauren, what are the things that you're doing in this beautiful, incredible month? The mm -hmm. month when I took Shahada, the, when, the month when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took okay. Shahada. The, you know, how can we revive ourselves and make us believe more that we are going to win? We, 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 we're in the box seat already, really. Alhamdulillah. You know, um, make space away from all the negativity. I know you hear this a lot, but the, 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 the media wants us to feel like we're failures. But when we read the Quran, we all see the winning team, right? We're the winning team. We're, we're the 10 nil team right here. Subhanallah. We've got the, we're walking on, we're following in the footsteps of the prophets. You know, who was tested more than they were? Allahu Akbar. And yet Allah Ta'ala tells us what victory is. Victory is closeness to him. Victory is letting go of this dunya so that has it has no hold over us. You don't own me. When I could say that to all the people in the media, you don't own me. And I don't care what you say because mm. I'm on his team. I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm, I, I, I want to be with Allah to Allah. I want to be raised mm. with my brothers and sisters. And you guys, to you, yours, to me, mine. And then mm. nothing matters as much. And doing good deeds, it's fascinating to know how the psychologists are just trying now to quantify what they call mm. the problem of good deeds, okay? Because in Darwinis Darwinism, yeah, there should be mm. no need for good deeds. The person with the biggest club and the biggest fist, they're going to win. It's all about winning. Mm. We're not about winning. Mm. We're about bringing everybody with us to Allah to Allah. Mm. We're about yes. giving. Giving is winning. Allahu Akbar. It is. It yeah, is yeah. winning. It's the wrong, isn't it? The wrong word because it kind of contextualizes it as being a, a competition. But we have to win individually, right? We. This is the test. We're in a competition. We're in a. We are constantly one hundred percent, hundred percent of the day under observation of, ya, of our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, we have erred in so many respects. But as long as we know that that is the case and we can see, you almost look, you've got to look up and say, look, there's the camera, right? Now, we do that when, isn't it true, Lauren, that we do, our, we look at the, the cameras outside on the street. Mm -hmm. oh, they're looking at us. But wow, that camera is nothing compared to the one which is right there and right there. In fact, there's two recording angels on your shoulders as mm -hmm. we speak, brothers and sisters. I'm saying this for myself, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. We need to remember this. If we saw the magnificence of these two beings on our angels and our Kareem, a Kareem, which is either telling us good things or bad things, you know, um, and we were aware of that, we mm. would be like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And nobody would walk past us, but they would want to become like, and this is what it was like. They would want to become Muslims. I want the to Prophet share a story. So, so Go forgive for it. me. I was, no, I no, was you're in, quite fine. Bless you. I was in Albania mm. two years ago. And I was giving a speech on hijab because the Albanians, again, um, under under uh, Soviet uh, rule, they had the they had their faith ripped from them, and uh, <laughs> still very painful Sorry. rift. And so, two young girls came up to me at the end, very pretty in a Western kind of way. Um, obviously, not in hijab. I wouldn't even said they were they were Muslim, but they came and sat with me, and they said. Um, we're really interested in hijab and they just don't know how to practice brother Yusuf. They don't know. And then one of these sisters, I've got the video of it. She said, um, I said, you know, hijab isn't easy to wear because people look at us in the street. It's not easy, but we do it for Allah. And she looked at me and she said, you don't know, do you? I said, sorry. She said, she doesn't know. And I said, what don't I know? She said, 
you don't know about hijab superpowers. Okay, I said, all right, this is coming from a westernized girl who doesn't wear hijab. I said, tell me what you mean. She said, you really don't know that when you walk down the street, it's like you're surrounded by light and we all envy you. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need some eerie music in the background for that one. I said, That's, what? Oof. Wow. She said, when we walk into the street in the town square, why do you think we look at you with hatred? Because it's like you're floating, she said, and we are dragging our feet in mud. It's like you're surrounded by light and we are struggling in darkness. And that's why we call it the hijabi superpower. And you don't know you've got it. Allah mm. Akbar. Isn't that amazing? And, so, and sister, and then therefore, and the incredible thing, it is an amazing thing. And uh, people say that. And there's a couple of stories I can tell you. There's, uh, there's one Afro-Caribbean girl from uh, London, a friend of my wife. So she comes back from Dubai. She says, I'm Muslim. Wow. Why? How did it happen? He said, I saw the way the brothers, the men, were so incredibly pristinely dressed, the Arabs, with their white thobes and their khutra. And they used to open the door for me, and they used to be very gentle, and their etiquette and their clothing made me want to become Muslim. And she did. She took Shahada. She came back London to London as a Muslim. Um, there was another thing I wanted to say, but I f it slipped my mind. It was even more awesome. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, we were talking about apparel and the power of apparel, you know, clothing and what it does. And I remember now, Lauren, contextualize that about, you know, Muslim women and the fact that France want to ban the hijab. Uh, Many other countries well, want to ban the hijab. The superpower mm. of hijab, ban the hijab. You know why? There are some classrooms, brothers and sisters, in France where all the women were wearing hijab. Subhanallah. Because all of them were wearing hijab. The girls were wearing hijab. So it became so commonplace, the, the French actually started to get scared of it they're scared of it look it's not no you know it's i don't like that term islamophobia to be honest it's it's not islamophobia it's it's you need to rephrase it you need to have a different term it's hatred but of allah it's it hatred, hatred of allah hatred yeah. of allah it's not a phobia <clears throat> phobia <clears throat> reminds us of arachnophobia uh you know scared of spiders <clears throat> No, there's there's some there's usually some root to it. Well, are we giving that mm. that they should have a root to the fear? No, it's hatred mm. of Allah and of His people. Mm. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So look at that. I mean, we've got now. We were talking, brothers and sisters. We've been talking about uh, coming back and reversion. How the we became Muslims and many of us did, decided to become Muslims and the and, and spiritual revival. And we started talking about the umasphere and the fact that we need to connect with each other. And this is a, a you know, that Lauren was mentioning the huge test that she's had. And we and juxtapose that with, well, we talked about then further on, uh, furthermore, about the tests that the ummah's going through and what we need to do in order to revive the spiritual ummah in the world, spiritual ummah, because it is a spiritual ummah. It's not a physical thing. It, it's not just like, one billion bodies, you know, it's, 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 it's your salah and the effects of your, when you make your wudu and people can yeah. see it, you wear your hijab with sincerity, yeah. you wear your beard and you wear your smile with sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that connectivity of everyone saying, we're going to do it for the right reason with the correct and near that subhanallah is going to result in uh, as the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, in the, in the Quran, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِنِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا That they will 
come, there will come a time when they will all run into this faith in vast, you know, um, crowds. And of course, it already happened in the context of Rasulullah's time. And it's going to happen again. It's yeah. going to happen again. There's going to be a tipping point. You know, the tipping point, isn't it, Lauren? Mm -hmm. Have we reached that tipping point? Are we close? You know what I want to say is this. Yes, yes, it is spiritual and there's a vibration and there is, you can go into somebody's house and you can sense the prayer as a non-Muslim. But I want to say a thank you right now. And I've never said this properly. Thank you, Yusuf, for being my brother. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Always, always been the person that I could speed dial from, from the first time that I, that mm. I entered Islam. And may Allah to Allah bless you because being just you only need one or two people in this life you know Allah Ta'ala has made it that everybody knows everybody in the Ummah right if you go to mm. Kuala Lumpur and you say is it Muhammad so and so and you know three mm. steps away through three three contacts you'll get to that person alhamdulillah yes. but if you've mm. got somebody who you can call and say I'm having this issue and you know they're going to go right mm. we are going to do something that's mm. the Ummah brothers and sisters and I want you and me to be that we Mm. To be that person I mean, who genuinely, you know, not 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 just for the for the for the for the film times, not just for the mm. eating out times, but mm. for the I'm in trouble and I've called you first by the because Allah inspired mm. me to call you, and we break our backs for that person. Mm. Please, may we all mm. be that person, inshallah. So thank you, Absolutely. brother. No, 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 Jazakallah khair for giving me the opportunity because it's an opportunity that you present. So whenever you see a person that's got challenges, particularly if they're a believer, particularly if they're a revert, a new Muslim, um, then it's incredibly important that you run to their assistance because of what just what uh, Lauren has just mentioned. The fact that actually it makes them steadfast upon the deen mm. because they will... They can either, they can make, the, everyone comes to a crossroad eventually every day, you know, physically and spiritually. And some of the, the tests that they get, if they don't get that support, then they choose the wrong uh, direction on the crossroad. And we know what happens after that. So it, it's, it's, it's incredibly important that we reach out to each other, um, you know, and seriously. I'm going to need to go in a second because I've got another I show. So. Thank you so much for your time. But I want to leave you mm. with this, inshallah to Allah. There is a sister that Yusuf and I are helping right now. She is mm. known to both of us. She is almost, uh, I would say, to, it's in my life a saintly person. And she never stops helping um, everybody, widows, orphans, refugees. And she mm. now is having a financial crisis because um, she put the, the family's money into a scheme that was a ripoff. Mm. And yeah. a, a lot of people we know in the London area lost hundreds of thousands in this. And she's struggling. And um, she's still giving away her skills for free to uh, mm. people in need. Um, and she hasn't asked for any help because she doesn't, because she says Allah will help me. So mm. if you go to my page now and you can see the PayPal link, we've met mm. our first, by the way, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, mm. our first point of paying off the, her, her first debts for rent mm. is, is, is done. But that doesn't mm. mean that she's in the clear. So if you did want to give any more to a specific sister with young children mm. who's helping the ummah, um, please visit laurenbooth.official and um, and make a donation via PayPal, and I'm sending the money straight mm. to her. And uh, I'll let you guys know when she gets it, inshallah. And may Allah ta'ala bless you. May he bring us Ameen. closer to him. Remember, the upward mobility is upward mm. through through the ranks until we sit mm. with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah ta'ala, um, uh, in, in Jamaat al -Fredus. Please remember <coughs> me and my family, us, and all of the Muslims. Ameen. I mean, Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease your, uh, your concerns and give my salams to your husband as well, uh, Lauren. And, uh, of course, uh, your dear uh, daughter, Alex, who's uh, very dear to all of us. And, um, and uh, we pray that the other daughter will come upon the path very, very soon with the dua of the ummah. Please make dua for uh, Lauren's two children as well. Uh, and I want to make sure that uh, we leave it in a very, very positive thing. 
Lauren's very happy, well adjusted, because despite all of her um, um, tests, she's living in a beautiful city, with beautiful sunshine outside, and there can be nothing better. And that's all due to the fact that she's always reached out to help the Palestinians, she's helped the Yemenis, the Syrians, etc. I'm convinced, hundred percent, that your all of your sadaka that you do, this is the reason why you are all virtually happy today. Really, it yeah. is uh, other things, but it's, it, it's a massive, massive, massive thing. Sadaka yeah. extinguishes the sins like water puts out fire. Sadaka yeah. relieves the pressure upon the believers, you know, and the take a distressful aspect of a believer today. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would relieve you of one of the distressful as aspects of the Yom Qiyamah. Right. This is hadith. Brothers and sisters, it's been an amazing time. Lauren Booth, official page there, uh, facebook.com forward slash official Lauren Booth. And uh, go there and donate for that sister. She is also a revert and she's helping Syrian refugees and she's in trouble herself. What more do I have to say? Subhanallah. Do this. Make it happen. She's going through her tests. Get out of the test. She might have millions and millions of thawab on her mizan, and you would have helped her, and you will share in those millions and millions of thawab. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of you in Ramadan. Accept your fast. Accept your recitation of Quran. Accept your qiyam. Accept your dua. Accept all of your sataka jariyah that you're doing. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to Lauren and to all of you. Goodbye.